okay guys yes ma'am just opening Well, I wrote the way it was written on that video, but it's not open. Actually, share your screen first. Okay, ma'am. Esto. Ma'am? Yeah. Jupiter. Hmm. Click on new. This one? Yeah. Python 3. Give me the. Hmm. You can copy that. Okay. Okay. I have, I have seen. Okay, Sunaina, and um, also I am telling this thing to others that you all should open Jupyter notebook, and I will guide you. I will give you some basic concepts. Okay, and. Uh, so uh, just respond to me uh, uh, when you all have opened Jupyter Notebook. Pooja, have you opened? Yeah. Parvej, have you opened? Parvage, have you opened Jupiter? No, ma'am. Just open it. Sunaina, what do you mean by programming? Well, what is programming? Yes. Well, it's an instructions, a set of instructions mm -hmm. uh, that is used to perform um, uh, that um, the tasks. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, it was right. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, man. Thank you, man. Do you know the basic difference between 
machine level language, assembly language, and high level language? I know this, but I'm not, I can't remember that. What do you mean by machine level? Machine level code is written in the form in binary form that is in zero and one basically. Zero and one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I level. Yeah. Tell me. That the. Are they... And that in case of assembly language, you use symbolic representation of those machine level language that is of those binary forms. Okay. And these are mainly used in case of microprocessors and to write some commands uh, or to build some this, uh, to write some commands for building operating systems and to develop some uh, desktop applications. Okay. In case of uh, assembly language, we need an assembler. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, which converts the, uh, the, symbolic representation or better you can say which can map the symbolic representation into the binary formats and get executed by, by the CPU. Okay. So that is assembly language, but uh, users cannot comprehend it. Okay. Uh, users cannot understand uh, machine level language as well, because when I, I use the text, hello world, the binary format would be 001001100001 and so on. So it cannot be understood by common users. So to understand, so to comprehend uh, the language, we need to uh, implement high level language. We need to use. Okay. So uh, here, uh, high level language comes in. Uh, that is, uh, the uh, it the structure is similar to like english like words okay and uh, and there is one basic difference between assembly language and high level language uh, assembly language does not contain any variable or functions so the code cannot be reused but in case of high level language we can reuse the code because it contains variables and functions okay so these are the basic differences between machine level assembly language and high level language and to execute high level language I, we need compiler or interpreter okay mm. can you tell me what is the difference between compiler and interpreter compiler translates the whole code at once and interpreter does one uh, one by one what is it it's first checks a sentence it uh, throws an error it translates and, each line. How it translates each line. And so at each line debugging takes place, huh? Hmm. hmm. So interpreter is faster. Yes. Uh, checks the more, uh, more uh, errors, okay, uh, quickly. So, uh, and uh, the main thing is that uh, Python is high level language and interpreted scripted language, you know, uh, we have done uh, these things. We have done scripting part in the in the last session, and that is why uh, I I just want to learn from you all that whether you are familiar with these two things, uh, interpretation, uh, interpreter, compiler, and uh, as uh, and at the same time, uh, what uh, do you have any idea about high level programming language or not? Because Python is uh, basically high level and interpreted scripted language. It also supports OOPS feature, object oriented feature that uh, is class and objects. Okay. Uh, so, class uh, and objects. Do you have any idea? Uh, by the way, I will deal with that part in the latter session, but uh, just uh, at the, the very beginning, you just know. Uh, you just know one thing that uh, it supports some uh, object-oriented uh, feature like uh, portability and uh, uh, creation of uh, objects, okay, from the class, templates class is a user-defined data type of, for objects, is a template for ob objects, okay. Objects means any um, uh, Python objects like uh, you can say car, okay. Car is representation of blueprint for all the models. Okay, 
suppose samsung hyundai these are the models or instances of that class okay so these are hyundai maruti suzuki these are the objects and you can say car is the template of these models so car is uh, defined to be as class okay so uh, this is the thing these are the some features of python okay Please have you opened? Yes, I opened. Okay, and uh, okay. So, uh, and the uh, another feature is it is cross-platform. language of uh, uh, what do you mean by cross platform can anyone say parvej or sunaina just respond to me no oh, no ma'am it can run on different platforms okay on different ways so, so what does uh, what does it mean uh, it means that uh, you can uh, Uh, you can use the code uh, on any operating system uh, provided interpreter must get installed in your pc which just uh, give you the output okay after execution after translating the code okay that is why uh, it is that is why python is cross platform language and it is uh, also dynamically typed language because uh, if you have any idea uh, about c or c++ we need to declare data types like int c float uh, f in uh, in such case uh, uh, you have to mention data types uh, in a static way but here if you pass value to a variable suppose a equal to 10 then a will take value 10 as integer you don't need to declare the data type that is why python is dynamically typed language hope you understand okay so just write down sunaina a equal to 10 on your jupiter notebook just run it run it you press the button on the round run okay. press the run button and now print print line use print print function within parentheses print a so that the uh, semicolon i uh, sorry no, no, only print a just yes yes run. then uh, yes execute the code okay now you use another function type of a type of a yes but uh, there will be any space no 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 space type, type of no no of only type within parenthesis a okay hmm then execute it run yes int okay so hope you have understood that you don't need to declare any data type here okay hmm. understood okay so now uh, the variable names uh, need to be declared here with alphabet or an underscore okay uh, at the first that is the first letter should be an alphabet or an underscore and uh, it is case sensitive that is caps ram or small lower case ram is different are two different variables okay and at the same time you can learn that uh, uh, it allows multiple assignment okay uh, just do one thing a equal to b equal to c equal to 50 jot down press the run button just print a b c sequentially
I'll run. Yes. Good. So you have understood multiple assignment. Okay. Then uh, do one thing. A comma B comma C equal to equal to. Okay. Five comma ten comma fifteen. Run. Print A, B, C again sequentially. Run. Run. Yes, yes. Run. Understood. 5 is assigned to A, 10 is assigned to B, 15 is assigned to C. That is why I'm saying multiple assignment is allowed in Python. Okay. Okay. Ma okay. Python also provides a large and broad library. Okay. Uh, and it provides rich set of modules and functions for rapid application development. It also supports graphical user interface development, okay? And it is free and open source, okay? Why it is free? Because you can get it freely, it is freely available at official web address. The source code is also available, okay? Therefore, it is open source. Okay, ma'am. Okay, and C, C++ can be used uh, to compile the Python code and uh, it can be easily integrated with this language as well. Okay, so it is extensible and integrated. Okay. I'm just giving an overview of Python history. That is, it, uh, the implementation of Python was started in uh, 1989, in December 1989 by Guido van Rossum at CWI in Netherlands. And last year in 1994, Python 1.0 was released with some new features like Lambda, Map, Delta Reduce. And then come Python 2.0, which, uh, which includes uh, features like comprehensions, garbage collection system. And uh, on December 2008, Python 3.0 was released. Okay. So this is the, the version uh, we are uh, currently using 3.8. You're using 3.8, I'm using 3.7, but uh, you can also see 3.9 available, okay, in the website. So what are the applications of Python? Okay, the applications is web application, GUI uh, application, software development, business applications, scientific analysis, okay console based application audio video based application 3d cad application okay application for emails and enterprise applications okay so now we come to data types okay so what are the standard data types of python Is it same as C and Java? No. The standard data types, okay, I am just telling you. Python provides various standard data types, okay. Uh, namely numbers, strings, list, tuple, dictionary, set, okay. You are familiar with the mainly numbers, strings, float, okay. So this, uh, what are the, you know, uh, in case of uh, C, uh, when we want to store a uh, single character, it, uh, it requires one byte, okay? And when uh, I want to store any integer value, it requires uh, four bytes, okay? Long in for long integer and for small in two integer, uh, two bytes. So the, actually data types define the storage method on each of them, okay? Uh, that is, 
how we can store them okay based on that storage management we have to maintain these data types okay just wait Okay, just print caps a equal to equal to ten. Uh, come to the new line. New line. Just enter. You new line. Data. I just want uh, to get executed in the same line. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll write. B equal to ten point five. Um, the next line you don't need to execute it. Okay, okay. Just enter. Yes, just enter. Just we'll go to the new line. Okay. Then C equal to uh, within a quote. Just uh, write hello. Okay, now execute. We're done. Yeah. Then print type of A. Acha. Yes. Type of A, A B C. Yes. Uh. Run. Yeah. You. You have to select type of A B C like print A B C. You yeah, okay? You uh, if you don't select type A B C together, then only the uh, last statement gets executed. Okay. So just select. Like this. Yes. Select this three and, and then. Run. Yes, then run. I'll uh, write it again, again a new line or it will work? It will work. Just run. Just hold. So just do one thing. Print. Just uh, use print function. Uh, just be, before the type function, use print. And in quotes. No, no, within parentheses. Print is a function, na? No? Parentheses. So first of all, na? No? Yes. This is called parentheses, and uh, the and you have used uh, earlier curly braces. Okay? Curly braces. Uh, uh, I'll do the same for B yes. and C. Yes, yes. Just yes, print. Select. Select. Run. Run. Yes. You can see the class. Okay. That is hmm. uh, what type of what type of data types. Okay. Uh, so the first one is of integer data type. The second one is float, and the third one is string data type. Understood. Hmm. Ma'am, at, uh, at first, why does it only print that uh, uh, that data type of C? Why not A and B? Because uh, uh, when you are executing a type of A, type of B, the, you are not using print function along with that, so it will not uh, understand. It will only get executed for the type C. But when you are using print, so uh, print holds the value. Okay, uh, and it display. Uh, on the it displays the output on the console. Okay. Okay, ma'am.
Okay. So, I just want to share my screen with you. So, just you can stop sharing your screen with me okay, and just follow my screen. Okay. Guys, just notice, just, just do this, okay, on your Jupyter notebook. That is name equal to input, what is name, okay, and slash n. Just do this. I'm also doing the same. Input function is used to receive uh, values from the user, okay? Okay. Then, go to this. Guys, have you done this? In case of print, hello plus name, we are concatenating two strings. Guys, please respond to me. Sunaina? Yes, I'm doing, it's uh, showing an, uh, it's always showing an error, an error record while creating a new so I book. just stop sharing my screen and you just, you just share your one. My one. Uh, yes, ma'am. New Python three. Um, just uh, uh, close the button. I can uh, just close this Chrome. Okay. No, no, no. Just uh, open uh, your notebook where you are doing this coding. What the, uh, by accidentally, I just uh, just um, cut it that. Okay. Cut that out. 
so okay, I okay. just scroll down. Okay. Um, you have not saved. Mm -hmm. Okay. In documents or in desktop, where are you? I didn't save uh, when I told now to uh, over, over new open, and open, open Python 3. And I was doing this from here. I, I didn't save anything. Okay. Okay. Just close everything. Chrome. I'll close this. Yes. Yes. Then open. You featured no debug. New? Just, just scroll down. I just want to see. Yes, there is untitled mm -hmm. type by NB. Just click on that. Yes. The just click on the untitled IP. Yes, yes, yes. IP by NB. Yes. 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 Just scroll down. I'll write here. Automatically saved. Okay. I I didn't I didn't save now. I thought it's gone. No, it it gets automatically saved. But if okay. you want to rename, then you have to go to file and then save as uh, there is save as option. You can rename it. Okay. 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 So now you just uh, do what I have told you to do. Name is equal to input function. Within parentheses, what is your name? What is your name? Sorry. Run. Yes, that's right. Just give your name. Just enter. enter. Yes. It's good. It's done. Okay. Huh. Uh, okay. Just uh, stop sharing your screen with me and then I can show you further. Okay. Just watch it. I uh I am using print function to concatenate two strings. Hello plus name okay i'm passing a space between these two concatenated strings hmm. just do the same However, it is working. Okay. Huh. Just do the following ones. That is red equal to input what is red and this.
here just notice at one thing that is uh, when i am passing the rate okay that is uh, 2.75 but when i use type function to know the what type of data uh, the rate is then uh, i have obtained the uh, s tier that is string okay but uh, i cannot do any operation okay uh, any arithmetic operations on string type data okay so i have to convert it so i use float okay the float function uh, and float operates on uh, rate okay which converts the string value and uh, so that uh, the string value gets uh, is to be treated as a float one and then it gets multiplied by the uh, in type value hour and give you the result pay okay but ma'am uh, rate we are asking an uh, float value why it is showing str because um, it, it considers that 2.75 as a string okay when you are passing through input functions na the mm. within quotes that is what is ra uh, the rate okay so uh, it thinks that you want to ask for any string okay so uh, it will treat that one as string so when you want to perform any arithmetic operation you need to convert it to float one okay okay ma'am uh, uh, done up done up to uh, our uh, okay i'll do this all yes yes have you done up to print pay uh, no ma'am doing done okay so now you can see uh, there is a variable with equal to 17 and another variable another variable height equal to 12 okay so when i want to divide with that is float division when i am i 
uh, I'm going to use two double blacks, backs, uh, forward slashes. Then uh, it is called floor division, which gives the integer value, okay? Two forward slashes with value. Okay, integer portion, okay? Hmm. Achha, got it. So if we use two slashes, then we will get the integer value. And if we use one slash, we will get the float value. Yes, with by two. When I have divided by one slash, okay, 2.0, then I'm getting 8.5, okay? Means we are getting an float value. Hmm. And by using double slash, you will get an integer value. Okay, yes, yes. And how you, we, we do that modulus thing now. What we will do in uh, that is the percent sign. Oh, we we'll use yes. percent. It is, it is this double back. Uh, that, that, that is hmm. uh, the here I have uh, uh, used uh, two forwards uh, slashes, hmm. which is used for floor division. Okay. Okay, ma'am. That gives you the least integer value for that division hmm. quotient. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Uh, dental pale, do this uh, or? Yes, do that. Do up to this one plus two into five. Okay, ma'am. It is an expression, okay? Yes, ma'am. It is an expression of literals. Okay, ma'am, doing this. Till there. You know the, the tokens are of four types, keywords, identifiers, literals, operators. Okay. Mm. So keywords are the special reserved words, you know. Mm. Two, false, okay, why, for, okay, and not, or etc. So they have a specific meaning, okay, and they do specific tasks. So they cannot be used as variable names. Identifiers are the variable names, okay, which refers to memory locations, okay, which mm. hold a specific value. Uh, and uh, identifiers can get changed, can, can change the their, their corresponding values, okay. So that is identifier can, identifiers can take different values at different time of execution, okay. Mm. And uh, liter and it uh, identifiers are user defined. Okay, so literals are constants. Okay, uh, suppose you have done one thing here right now that is one plus two into five. So mm. it is an expression of constants. Okay, and uh, you just get the uh, the result after performing some arithmetic operations. Okay, and operators are what. Do you have any idea? Um, operators are uh, um, uh, that uh, operators are the symbol uh, plus plus minus additional uh, then bitwise about arithmetic operators that is one type of operator i am uh, i i want the generic meaning of operator okay operators are the symbols okay that operate on operands okay that is hmm. on two items or two variables okay oh and then uh, execute some a certain task and give you the desired result okay so these are the four types of tokens keywords identifiers literals and operators okay ma'am So uh, then, uh, just write. Uh, there is a uh, program uh, that is what is temperature in Celsius, and I want to convert it to Fahrenheit. Okay, mm -hmm. just do this. Mm, uh, but ma'am, I have not done up till that uh, thirty-fifth line. I'll do that or leave that. Done. done. Just do. Okay, I will do everything. Uh, you do up to one plus two into five. Hmm. Just let me know after that. Okay.
Mam done till uh, line thirty five. And then do the programming Celsius, Celsius and Fahrenheit scale. Him. And here I am. I have done. Uh, I have taken the temperature in Celsius scale and just converted into Fahrenheit scale and then print it in Fahrenheit format. Okay, ma'am. Man, done the program. Okay. Ma'am, uh, we calculated Celsius. Why we, uh, when we wrote that Fahrenheit is equal to in, did we hmm. use in C? I have just used it, okay. Because uh, if you give some other values, uh, in case of Celsius, okay, suppose 40.5, I want to take only 40, okay. That's why I okay. have done this. Because you have okay. used input function not to receive the values mm -hmm. of temperature in Celsius scale. Yes, ma'am. Got it, ma'am. I want to show you one thing. Here. Just watch it. Can you notice? Okay, okay ma'am. I'll note this. Okay. So just jot down one thing. Have you watched it? What hmm. I have done here? I just use a backslash. Okay. Hmm. At times you need to uh, give some values. Okay. In the next line. So what? You, how can you pass these values? Just use a backslash and then come to the next line and then print whatever you want to print. If you want to go further, you can do this. Backslash. But if you don't give backslash, then right. okay. If you don't mm -hmm. want to use backslash, then you have to put it in a in the same line. But at times it may happen. You may encounter uh, such situation that you need to go to the next line to give the values of that uh, to give provide string to the variable. Okay. Okay, ma'am. So you have got a basic idea about integer float, okay? Hmm. So can you uh, tell me uh, why do we call string as uh, immutable? You know, numbers uh, and uh, are also immutable because you cannot change the values of a number, okay? Because they are literals. Okay, so uh, why do we call strings uh, to be immutable. 
because uh, it will because it can uh, it will also not change means uh, if i create a string once it is not going to change hmm. the string object does not support active assignment uh, that is the string can only be replaced with a new string since its content cannot be partially modified okay that's why strings hmm. are immutable in python okay i am citing one example here you can better understand okay ma'am Have you seen this? But I can't understand, ma'am. Suppose I want Why to change. Why is too much? Hello. What, ma'am? I can't understand. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I want. I want to change the string partially. Okay. So I cannot do it because strings are immutable. Okay. So this is suppose this is my string. Okay. So if I do this, mm -hmm. just watch one thing. Here two. Okay. Hello. Okay. But if I assign mm -hmm. this, s tier two equal to s tier one, and then print s tier two. Then yes. I can get this. Okay, hmm. that is same like the string one. But when I want to change str one, uh, the first position within the square bracket, I I ha I have mentioned uh, position. That is first position to th third. That is first and second elements. Okay, so it hmm. will not support item assignment. It will not change partially. The uh, the letters okay. Either mm -hmm. it will change entirely. That is, str two equal to str one, 
HTR2 will get replaced by the content of HTR1, okay? But it does not support. Similarly, if you want to change HTR2, one is two, three, equal to two, one is two, three, does not support item assignment. That is why strings are immutable in Python, okay? Hmm. Now I want to show some operations on strings. Just watch. Asterisk sign is used for repetitiveness. Okay, it is repetitive operator. So str one gets printed for thrice. Okay, when uh, I have uh, used uh, class which works as concatenation operator, then. Uh, these three strings get joined. So hello, hello, and another mm -hmm. hello. But in the case of str3, uh, the first letter of hello starts uh, with a lower case, okay? Hmm. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Why ma'am LL? -E -L -L so in case of I want to get, obtain the value. Uh, so G. Yes, yes. Just tell me. Zero, one, two, three, four. Yes. So it will. So uh, it will not take O? Uh, no, no. Uh, it will take only the uh, second, it starts with, from the second position, okay, and then mm -hmm. print the third one, okay, second and third. It is called slice range. Oh, you know. Okay, so first, S slice? First, one, first one, just listen to me, first one, uh, in the in case of first one, I have used square brackets now, that is uh, range mm -hmm. operator, okay, uh, and okay. I use one particular value. And if I want to use uh, slicing, okay, why uh, I have introduced here a colon operator along with the square brackets, then I get uh, hmm. a certain a specific set of values within from that string, okay. Hmm. Okay. Understood. <laughs> Done up to that. I have written this, ma'am, in copy, but I have not done that. Uh... On the no, no, Jupiter. Just start executing on your no, notebook just because you may face some uh, error now, then I will clarify. Okay, ma'am. Just do first. Yes, ma'am, doing.
can you just scroll your screen a little upwards? Yes. No. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. This one done up till there. Now do this part. Print the string is percentage. While you are doing that hello and then name, you used a plus for to concatenate. Yes. So why are you using it as? What are you saying? Uh, when you are do starting doing this, while doing that uh, function name, you use that concatenation sign to hello plus the name. Yes, yes. So uh, why in this case you are using percentage s? Okay, heard the percentage s. Okay. Hmm. Uh, actually, I am uh, uh, I am going to show you something else. Okay. Uh, okay. In case of uh, concatenating two strings, I have used. Hello plus that variable name name. Okay, hmm. so uh, here in case uh, I want to use format specifier. You know, uh, in case of C, percent hmm. for integer, format specifier, percent F for float, and percent S for string. So how can we write? Okay, uh, so in case of uh, uh, Python, we can use format specifier. That is the string is percentage, and then. Uh, in case of C, you uh, you have to use comma for printing. Uh, but here uh, we have to use uh, percentage sign, okay? And okay. Then, uh, put the variable name, okay? <laughs> okay, ma'am. Okay. Just watch this thing. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. You know the Boolean values false and true. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, where do we need to use Booleans? We use Boolean just to uh, find if the it will result in true or false. To check the conditions, now. Which huh. is evaluated to be either, either which is valid to uh, evaluated to either uh, false or true. Okay, so hmm. this is uh, uh, how we want to uh, check, and uh, then uh, this boolean value uh, need to be properly used. Okay, hmm. so in case of print w in stream one, uh, you can see one thing. That is W is not present in string one. Okay, huh. so it will return the boolean value as false. But in case of print W not in string one, 
um, w not in is true okay so it will return true so here in uh, works as membership operator whether the uh, element is present or not okay within a given string or list or tuple whatever you want to search okay mm -hmm. so about uh, operators what are those operators are used to assign uh, no I, I have learned uh, from you that is operators are symbols and this and hmm. that which operates on two operands or a few operands to perform some tasks but uh, what are the categories what are the different types of operators you have learned uh, arithmetic yes uh, then uh, relational uh, logical and okay just note, note down uh and there are seven type of operators main, mainly arithmetic operators uh, and comparison then comes assignment operators then come logical operators bitwise operators membership operators identity operators okay hmm. i will cite a few examples on that also okay Arithmetic operators are plus, minus, you know, comparison less than, greater than, as I mm -hmm. is equal to, not equal to. Okay. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, logical operators and or not, bitwise operators, mm -hmm. bitwise and, bitwise, or, or. Okay. Membership huh. operator is in. Identity operators are is. Okay. Membership operators are in. In, but not this, in. Achha, these two are only membership operators. Yes. Uh, okay. not is uh, uh, used for logical operators huh. uh, but uh, uh, when it is associated with membership operator uh, then uh, we, we are just trying to check whether the value is present or not suppose i want to i want to check that it is it should not be present okay and mm -hmm. then uh, the following uh, statements will get executed for that condition okay okay and identity operators is uh, is okay hmm. is is we will do that part when we will we'll do the class part okay hmm. because uh, you cannot understand uh, what uh, what is uh, what does it mean right now because uh, when if i am saying uh, two instances share the same id or same object then i can uh, use is operator in such cases but you cannot understand right now Okay. 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 You know, the precedence of the operators is very much important to find out since it enables us to know which operator should be evaluated first. Okay. So, you know, exponent operator is given the highest priority over all others used in a particular expression, then comes negation. You know, tilde sign is used for negation and then unary plus and minus, and then come multiplication, divide, modules, remainder, floor division, you know, then mm -hmm. comes binary plus and minus, then come left shift and right shift, then binary and, then zor or, okay. Then comparison operators like less than, greater than, greater equal to, then equality operators, okay. And then assignment operators, you know, uh, you know, compound assignment operators. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I'm just showing you. Suppose this is your 10. This is this equal sign is uh, treated here as assignment operator, okay. Then I can do one thing also. Right. 
Understood? Amen. This plus equal to sign is compound assignment operator. Mm -hmm. You can do uh, the same for uh, for multiplication, division. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is b equal to, instead of writing b equal to five five plus five. I have just written here b plus b plus is to five. Okay. And then comes uh, identity operators that is 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 not and then membership operators in not in and the lowest precedence here uh, uh, is for logical operators that is not or and okay. Huh. You know how to write comments which are not executable statements. Double slash slash. Okay. Oh, actually take the ease operator here. That is why I cannot have to pass a different string. Understood. Use of triple quotes. Hmm. Okay. Have you done up to that part? I think this uh, is, uh, line 18 done. Up to line 18. Just do this. Okay, ma'am.
So, have you any doubts up to that? No. Have you understood? Hmm. Okay. So, now we come to uh, e-fails part. You know, uh, what is the, what do, why do we use e-fails statement? To check the condition. Hmm? To check a condition. Okay. If it's, it's, if it's true, it it will uh, print the if part, or if it's false, depending on the condition, it will go to the else part. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if statement is used to test a specific condition, okay. If mm -hmm. the condition is true, a block of code uh, that is within the if block will get executed. And in case of if else statement, uh, it is similar to if statement except the fact that it also provides a block for the else part okay hmm. so uh, it will also check for the false case and uh, and the, when the condition gets checked and if the condition provided in the else part um, is true be, uh, is evaluated to true then uh, the, the corresponding statement will get executed okay huh. and uh, nested if you know uh, we can use uh, an if statement within an another if statement. If statement. Okay. So, how can we write? Suppose. Just do the same with me, okay? Okay, ma'am.
So Nainad, have you done up to that? I have done up till, I'm doing this one, that uh, line 44. Line? 44. 34? 44. Okay. Else if one. Have you understood? Hmm, I have understood. It, it's, 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 it's Python. It's different from hmm. the value python defined for language variable okay because hmm. uh, it is case sensitive yes 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 because the first letter of the value python which i have passed to the language variable is it's capital okay and uh, for condition checking the value passed as python but the first letter is lower case okay okay you can understand the indentation ha ma'am indentation now that is not like uh, we write paragraphs yes. 
yes, yes, yes. We don't need to use any curly braces. Only braces. Yes. We have to uh, follow the indentation. Okay. Proper. Mm. That is after three space. Uh, we have to start from the fourth space. Okay. Ha ha ha. Like we do, do in English paragraphs. <laughs> Done up to that? I'm just not doing. I have just modified. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I will also modify and do. You also modify. Okay, ma'am. Okay, I'm done. Done. Hmm. So now I'm going to show you the use of logical operators for conditional checking. Okay. Okay.
I'm going to do the same using and operator. Okay. If I cannot use and, then I have to do nested if. Okay. That is, I have to write an inner if statement within an outer if statement. Okay. Here I am doing a little bit modification using AND operator. Then I go to the baseline again, else. You have to keep matching with the corresponding if else statement, okay? Maybe because I have written here if statement, so I have to go to the baseline for else part, okay? But in, case, in, in the previous case, I have to go to the uh, base part for the second if statement, okay? Huh. You have to keep watching the indentation part as well. Otherwise, you will not get the desired result or you may encounter error. Here I have used and, and it checks both the condition which need to be evaluated to true, okay? Understood? Yes, ma'am. But if I do this, if I just change the and, I replace the and with or, okay? So either one of the conditions need to be evaluated to true. Okay. Huh. So if I do this or not logged in, okay, then also it prints the first statement. Okay. Understood. Or 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 and not. Yes, okay. or not logged in. Not logged in means what? Uh, uh, in the previous case, logged in gets evaluated to true. Oh. But now, logged in gets evaluated to false. But uh, I have to evaluate only one condition. Either one of the conditions need to be true. Okay. If uh, either one of oh. the conditions uh, are uh, evaluated to true, then print the statement corresponding to each statement. Okay. Have you understood? Mm. Suppose, oh, suppose I'm just showing you again. Then I keep the second condition to be true. Okay. But I change mm. the value for user to user instead of admin. Okay. And I run it. Mm. Okay. Admin. Understood. Because logging is evaluated to true. So it does not check or it does not bother about the value of huh. user. Okay. Hmm. Have you done up to that up to this part? No, I have not done. Ma'am, then in, in line 50, if you use or not, it will print uh, the else part. Or not in line 50? In line 50. In line 50. Yes. Hmm. The, like we used uh, user equal to user or logged in. Yes. If logged I have uh, if right or that's not. Why it, uh, it prints welcome to website. Okay. Corresponding to its it Welcome to. Because it does if we not use bother or about, not. It does not bother about user value. Okay. 
Understood. Achha. And uh, and if we have used an or not, suppose it, suppose just it will print. Just, wait, I again replace the or with and. Okay. Understood. Hmm. It checks both the conditions. Ah, understood. The conditions need to be evaluated to true. But when I hmm. replace this and with or, then only either of the condition needs to be evaluated to true. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Have you done up to that? No, I have not done. Okay. I have done up to. Hmm. Okay, okay, just do. Okay, ma'am. I'm done up till there. So, uh, <clears throat> I have I am doing here. Uh, that is, uh, how can we use false values? Okay. So uh, you can use false. You can use none. You can use zero or any other numeric type. 
you can use any empty sequence or any empty mapping like dictionary just uh, do the same on your jupyter notebook i will explain you okay Sunana? Yes, ma'am. Have you done up to that? Uh, up, this up to number 55 done, ma'am. Can you scroll it down? Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, done.
to. Here you you can notice uh, one thing that is uh, when I'm passing false, then the else part gets executed. When I'm passing none, then the else part gets executed. Okay. When I'm passing zero, hmm. the else part gets executed. But when I'm passing any other numeric value other than zero, then it gets if hmm. uh, the statement if. corresponding to if statement uh, if corresponding to if condition gets executed. Okay. Then when I'm passing empty segment, huh. the square brackets represents for list, empty list, okay? So then, or you can uh, use a huh. uh, single, within single quote, okay? That is empty string or uh, parenthesis uh, for empty tuple, okay? Then uh, it, uh, it it is, uh, the condition gets evaluated to false. So the else part gets executed. And uh, for mapping like dictionary, we use curly braces. Is M, uh, it stands for empty dictionary. So it uh, also prints the S part. Okay. Have you understood up to that? Mm. Okay. Mm. No. Done. So, okay. I, I am just uh, stop. I just want to stop sharing my screen here. I want to show uh, something else. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, is there any specific uh, that we will, uh, when we will use single inverted commas and double inverted commas? No, you can use both. You can use both, but it doesn't matter. Oh, you can use single code, you can use double code. Okay. Achha. So Nena, can you share your screen? Yes, I want to show the screen where you have kept the Python. Okay. Because in the last session, you have not asked me and I forgot to let you know that why did why we need to say two parts. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Where my Python is, uh, where I have kept my Python. I cannot see, I cannot view your screen. But I'm sharing my screen. No, it does not come. Oh, my internet connection. No. It is showing a uh, message that internet connection is on. Just try. Just try. Is it visible now? No, it is not visible. I'm sharing my screen. Hello, Sunaina. Yes, ma'am. Just share your screen. Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma'am. 
Um, no, no, I I cannot view. No. Hello. Hello. Yes. I'm showing you. Share. Hello. Hello, you are audible. Hello, Sunaina. Hmm. Just share. Puja, can you share your screen with me? Puja? Yeah, I can. Just share. Okay. Can I let them know? Just give me a minute, please. It's visible, no? Yeah, I just want to view that screen where you have kept my. Hello, I'm not getting you actually. I cannot see anything. But it's visible. Hello. It's no, 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 my phone screen is blank. No, no, I think so. My full screen is blank. Actually, Sudhana, your voice is breaking also. I Means take your internet connection. I think there was something problem. It is uh, my phone is actually closing and it's so closing and so I don't know what is happening to my Zoom. Can I'm still my, my whole screen is blank. I think your internet connection is slow. Check your bandwidth.
Yes, ma'am. Now it is visible. Okay. Give me that. You can continue. Okay. Uh, Buja, yeah. uh, I think uh, Sunaina can share her screen right now. Okay. Shall I stop share? Yes, yes. You just stop sharing. Sunaina, just you share your screen. I just want to view yes, that screen where you have kept Python. Okay. 